Welcome to Iceland, a country filled with natural beauty and unique experiences. While many tourists flock to the popular destinations such as the Blue Lagoon and the Golden Circle, which are amazing of course, but there are also so many hidden gems that are often overlooked. In this video we'll take a look at 10 lesser known places that will give you an authentic and unforgettable Icelandic experience. From secluded hot springs to mesmerizing waterfalls, these hidden gems are sure to make your visit to Iceland one to remember. And we honestly had the best time ever. It was such a dream trip that we made. We made a full circle road trip on Iceland and we have some hidden gems for you that you don't want to miss. You might also want to look at our playlist here on the channel because we have the best hotels for the whole route. We have the best food in Iceland. We got you covered here, right? So subscribe right now and check out the playlist after you've watched this video. Okay, so let's get started on 10 of our favorite hidden gems and experiences. So it's not only like a spot, we also have some experiences that you don't wanna miss when you plan a trip. So many tourists, they plan and they only go to the most famous spots. And you definitely have to go there because the Gacy is the Blue Lagoon, the waterfalls, they are amazing and you don't wanna miss them. But since there is so much more to discover, we made this video so you can add them to your itinerary. And I'm pr I promise you, it won't be like off route. It will be all there in the same areas where you're already visiting. So let's get started. Number one, we're starting off with maybe our favorite experience of this whole trip, and that is the Harunalog Hot Spring, which is a secluded hot spring in the middle of nature. You might have to pay a little bit to uh, a guy sitting in a car, which is the owner of the land. It's not that expensive and you can just take your time and just walk up to the hot spring go down a path and you'll find a little shed where you can get dressed uh, and then there are like three pools around that shed it is beautiful in a valley and you'll just love it we were there when we arrived there were two or three other tourists there and they left after 10 minutes and then we had the whole pool to ourselves how awesome was that it was mind-blowing beautiful and the Haruna Lock is in the Golden Circle area. So make sure when you're doing gaze here and Gulfos that to include Haruna Lock in your trip. Number two is also in the Golden Circle area. And this is a food spot that you don't want to miss. It is Friedheimar Tomato Restaurant. It's, it's like that. It's a tomato restaurant because it's a greenhouse. And inside the greenhouse, they made a little restaurant. So you are sitting inside the greenhouse in between the tomato plants. It is awesome, the vibe is awesome, but let me tell you, the food, you don't want to miss that. It is one of the few spots in Iceland where they actually grow tomatoes. The tomato soup is so good and you get fresh bread with it, which also blew our minds. It was really awesome. They are only open for a few hours a day, so make sure to check their website and maybe if you have the time, make a reservation because uh, you don't want to come there when it's full. In our case, we were there in May and it wasn't super busy, so we were lucky and we didn't have to make a reservation. But put this on your list, Friedheimar Tomato Restaurant. All the links to the spots are in the video description below. Number three, there are a few hidden waterfalls along the famous waterfall route where you have the um, Seljuland Falls and the Skoga Falls. Those are the ones that every bus tour will stop at. But these two that I'm gonna mention here are a little bit more hidden and not a lot of tourists go there. The first one is only 400 meters to the left from the Seljandsfoss and it's called Kufabru. I'm butchering these words, Kufabru. And there is actually a sign that will says walk here because you have to park your car at the Seljandsfoss, then you walk for four or five, 600 meters and there's a little narrow entry to a cave and in that cave is that famous waterfall where you can stand on a rock with the waterfall in your back. You will get wet and you might have to get wet feet because you have to walk on stones in the water to get there, but it is beautiful. It is mesmerizing. Definitely check that one out. And the other one is Kvernufos. Kvernufos is only five minutes by car or let's say 10 to 15 minute walk from the Skogafoss waterfall. And it is also, you have to walk a little bit like 15 minutes or something into a canyon and there is this beautiful waterfall. It's situated in a beautiful canyon, but just because it's a little bit further out, you have to walk a little bit further, is a reason for not uh, a lot of tourists to take the effort and go there, but you will love it. It is beautiful. The walk up there all alone is beautiful on its own. Number four is an experience you definitely want to do. It was one of our favorites, and um, this is have a glacier walk. Go up to Skaftafell, book a glacier to walk there you can just book them in advance or even go up to the information center 
and they have several tours a day. You'll go up there, you'll get some gear like those shoes and those crampons and you get, even get a little stick uh, with a hook that will make you feel like a professional glacier walker and rock climber <laughs> and it was really really good and if you are lucky they will even include a little um, ice cave in the tour if the, if the season allows it and we were lucky we entered a little tiny ice cave and it was stunning the colors were amazing and the whole walk it took a few hours and it, you got a lot of information about the glacier the, the guy did such a good job with all the information and we learned so much and it was amazing to just be on that glacier and walk around and it, this was an experience you don't want to miss out and a lot of the tours they don't include it because it takes a little bit too much it takes a bit too much time so that's why we always advise you to book your own car so you have the time to yourselves and you can determine your own itinerary and if you're in Skaftafell by the way and you parked your car there and you did the glacier walk and you come back then maybe take the effort to walk up to the Svartifoss. Svartifoss is the black waterfall. It is a 45 minute uphill climb and also 45 minutes back. That's why also a lot of tourists don't take the effort. It is maybe one of the most beautiful waterfalls that I've seen on Iceland because it has that, that black basalt columns um, as a backdrop for the waterfall. It is stunning. So include that as well. There was a, a little bonus tip. Number five is go to the lava fields of the Fagraldalfall volcano. I I can't even say this. I will try it again. Fagraldalfall <laughs> volcano. Well, Google it. It's not that far from the Blue Lagoon. It is on that little peninsula there. It is the volcano that erupted recently. So most recently, so check it out. And there's there you can just make a beautiful hike and walk up to the lava flow that is still um, hardening up and toughening up. And there is still steam coming out of the lava. Um, make sure to not walk on the lava because it takes a lot of time to really harden out and it stays hot for a long time. But of course, near the edge, it is, it is okay to just walk up to the edge. Don't walk on it. They advise you not to walk up on it. But um, it is stunning. It is beautiful. You can see the power of the lava there. It is, for me, it was such a highlight of this trip because the power of nature, you can really feel it. They don't call it the, the land of ice and fire for nothing. Well, this was the fire part that you really can just see up close and personal. Amazing. Talking about lava, coming to our number six tip for this video on things to include is the lava show. It is a kind of a lava museum it is situated in Vik, but they recently also opened up one in uh, Reykjavik. So that is awesome if you don't get to go to Vik, then in Reykjavik you can also visit the lava show and it will give you a little bit of information about lava, which was also super interesting. And then they pour out some real lava. It is a remelted lava. So the lava was hardened and then they remelted in a special oven and they, they will pour it out into a special, yeah, like a sand pit and you're sitting around that sand pit, so the lava is coming towards you. It is hot, it is amazing, it is beautiful to see. Then the, the, the guide from the museum will like start to manipulate the lava and talk about the lava. They will show you how it, how it reacts to certain circumstances. It was once in a lifetime to see lava up close and personal like that. It was so good, so good. Number seven. If you're going to Iceland, especially if you're going in the summer, it's going to be really expensive. So maybe not go in July and August or something. But if you're going there and it is already a little bit of an expensive trip, but then maybe take the effort to splurge once on a cabin. We booked the Panorama Glass Lodge and it was mind blowing. It was a cabin alone in a valley, sun setting. You had a jacuzzi outside on the terrace. It is glass all around you so you get to see the whole valley when you're lying in bed. It was mind-blowing. It was not, not cheap but it was worth it for one night because we did a full tour. It was only one night and then I think it was doable. And there are plenty of other cabins there so you don't have to book the panoramic glass lodge. There are other beautiful options but really I advise you to splurge one night on your trip. You will not regret it. They also have like those plastic bubbles you can sleep in there are so many awesome spots that you might want to try out number eight and this is also for me a very important tip because it was such a beautiful spot in iceland that we went to it is the sneffelsness peninsula this is an area where not all tourists go because it's not included in guides or it's a little bit out of the way 
It is only two hours from Reykjavik and it is a little peninsula where you can drive around in one day and go back to Reykjavik. It will give you a complete Iceland experience because it has waterfalls, glaciers, mountains, cliffs even that you want to see. It has like a really nice area which is called Hatklatur where they have a hole where the water splashes in and they have Dritvik where you can get the Viking stones and lift them and see if, you're, if you would have been a good Viking uh, fisherman back in the day. It has all of these amazing spots and the most most iconic and the most photographed spot in Iceland, the Kirkjufell waterfall. So you definitely want to include uh, Snæfellsnes Peninsula for sure in your itinerary. And we have a video on why to include it. Uh, it will go a little bit more in depth with more examples than what I'm giving you now. So check out that video on our channel as well. And of course, like I said, with the cabins, we also have a video on the best hotels and the best food in our Icelandic playlist. So move over to that playlist after you've seen this video. Number nine is a very important one for food lovers. Experience the food in Reykjavik. There are so many amazing food spots to discover and, and I would call that a hidden gem as well, right? So don't only go to the, um, the hot dog stand. You need that because it's iconic, but you also want to check out. They have so much amazing restaurants. They have the real traditional Icelandic food and you can also taste the fermented shark that we did. But there are also other really hip and trendy food places like we discovered a beautiful um, dim sum place which re with really fresh dim sum that we loved and we had the best time ever. So definitely walk around in Reykjavik looking for some really nice and hip and trendy food spots. It's worth it. Then the last one on our list for today, number 10, is Jokul Sarlon and the Diamond Beach. Jokul Sarlon is the, uh, the iceberg lagoon and you might say, well, this is not a hidden gem. Everybody knows about it. It's true. So this number 10 is maybe a little bit of like a, huh, what are they saying? But I did want to mention it in this video because, and this is why, a lot of the tours, they only go up to Vic. And that is um, like the waterfall area, the black sand beach. And they don't go any more north because, or east, northeast, because it's too far. And this you will regret. The Jokul Salon is about one and a half hour drive, I think, from Vic and it is stunning it's the iceberg lake you can just sit there for hours on end and watch those iceberg float in front of you it is magical if you're lucky and you have some sun it is like watching television but even better than that it is the most mind-blowing experience like the panoramic view and then the, the the icebergs changing and floating magical honestly magical so that's why i included it in this trip and the diamond beach which is just across from the road with all of those ice shards on the beach and you can just lift them up and enjoy it is a beautiful spot so i would say definitely go up to that spot before you go back down to Reykjavik. so i hope you love this video on our hidden gems our favorite spots that are mostly overlooked by other tourists so let me know if you have some other favorite spots that aren't included in this video put them in the comment section down below so other viewers can see them and read them as well right for now i want to say thank you for watching give the video a thumbs up and thanks for subscribing to our channel as well for more content from all over the world because that's what we do here on stuffer we stuff our faces all over the world and we give you some great travel guides and travel tips as well thank you for watching and see you soon bye